Hi, this is JP from Not the Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to the first episode of my initial playthrough of the Edge of the Earth campaign. And I have decided to play it with Monterey Jack. I actually did this decision uh, right after the Edge of the Earth Investigator expansion came out. And I thought that whoever I would play would have to be a good clue-getter and uh, I prefer the evasive uh, playstyle, so Monterey was the first pick in line. So I built a deck for Monterey and this video is all about uh, going through the deck list, so let's get started. As a disclaimer, I haven't uh, played any of the scenarios before, so I will be going in blind. Another thing to point out is that I will play the scenario first through before I film it. This is because in, um, for example, the uh, in Smart Conspiracy campaign, I had to film a couple of videos twice because I missed some rules and the initial playthroughs were just a mess. So. To avoid that, I will play the scenario through, then play it again and film it and keep that result. So I won't be going in completely blind, but it, is, it will be a, a pretty close blind playthrough. And uh, uh, as you can see, I have already built the deck for Monterey. You can see the fourth learning here. So that is a hint that the deck is quite thick. So we have 15 extra cards in the deck. So let's hop over to ArkhamDB.com and see what we have in the deck. Uh, we are over on ArkhamDB.com and here is the Monterey Jack deck I built for the Edge of the Earth. And uh, again, I don't know <laughs> how the scenarios work at all. Only thing I've heard about the campaign is that movement is essential. The maps are big, so I built that the Monterey Jack deck according to that. So, uh, first off, I already mentioned the Force Learning. Uh, force Learning is a permanent limit one per deck. Purchase a deck creation, increase your deck size by 15 during each upkeep phase. Instead of drawing one card, draw two cards and discard one of them. And um, this really speeds up the deck flow. You can find the cards you need at the moment, uh, at that moment, and you can discard cards that are not essential. And uh, I have played a couple of games using force learning and it is a really powerful card uh, the deck size increase is nothing it's it, it just makes you have uh, even more flexible cards in the deck and not that lean cut deck that you usually run uh, then uh, let's start from the assets of course we want to be good at investigating and because we can't take uh, for example that many uh, seeker cards at the start I opted to take two flashlights, a really stable investigative card. Then, of course, rope investigative power from the lock picks. Uh, Monterey has a high agility and high intellect, so a test of nine means that we hopefully won't be breaking that many lock picks. Uh, so, so if we break a lock pick, we lose the lock picks right away on level zero. So hopefully that won't happen that much. Uh, we, of course, have the Trusty Bullwhip. Um, then uh, I really like uh, in evasive gameplay and through solo obfuscation. It is a fast card. You can get it into play when you need it. It doesn't take any of your um, other uh, asset slots and uh, other than the arcane slot. So you can e investigate even if you have an enemy engaged. So you can cheat a clue, then maybe evade and move away and stuff like that, so um, that is a good card. Uh, Lucky Secret Case is a staple card for me in Rogues, that makes you draw even more cards. I might uh, update this to some other accessory slot item later, but for now it is a placeholder at least. Uh, we have some really important assets and a big deck. Uh, so backpack is, uh, I think it's a good card for this deck. So I, I added those. 
Uh, then in the allies we have Leo De Luca. Uh, Leo is a staple ally and uh, gives you more uh, actions, which is really crucial in solo. Uh, then uh, a newer card I, I <laughs> opted to uh, boost my movement a bit with the sled dog build. So I have four sled dogs in the deck, and uh, I will be upgrading to charisma, so I can have even more sled dogs and. Uh, all that good stuff so uh, let's see how that works then uh, one of the cars I'm using from the seeker zero level cars is the field work it is a really good card you move into a location get the booster investigative uh, skill or anything you need and that is a good card uh, then uh, to get some resources. I have Lone Wolf, which is a really stable card for me, at least in uh, True Solo. Uh, force Learning I already talked about. Then we go to the events. Uh, we have Hit Me, which is a newer card. I've um, found out this is a really, really good card and there is only two skulls in the uh, bag at the start of the campaign, so I thought that Hit Me would be a good, good addition. Uh, then, uh, I don't know if there are many resign uh, scenarios, but I'm out of here, is he here at the start. If we figure out that we don't need I'm out of here, so I can just uh, upgrade it to some uh, level 1 to 5 seeker cards later. Uh, then, to boost our uh, evasive and investigative skills, breaking and entering is a staple card for me from now on. It is a really good card. It saved me from, from a lot of uh, difficult situations when uh, playing a evasive uh, investigator who is uh, also investigating. Uh, calling in favors is basically that if I get a sled dog early on and I seem to not need it, I can try to find Leo and replace uh, the sled dog with Leo. And uh, then I have Elusive, and uh, to remind, I'm playing on the latest taboo list, so Elusive uh, reads that this card now reads Disengage from each enemy engaged with you and move to the connecting location with no enemies, so it uh, is a bit hindered, but it is still a good card, so I'm keeping that. And then we have Faustian Bargain, which is also replaced um, emergency cash for me for every rogue deck or any deck that can take this. Uh, the two curse tokens is not that bad and you get five resources from this. So this is a really, really good resource card. Then, uh, of course, we will have a lot of resources from uh, uh, Jack's ability and uh, uh, the other cards. So Intel Report is really good can snatch two clues or just if you have to keep moving you can leave some clues behind and snatch them later. Uh, Scout Ahead is a newer card and this uh, really boosts the movement aspect of Monterey so you can play this move, in ignore enemies that are in your way and get the benefits of moving a lot with Monterey Jack. Uh, then uh, of course Shortcut lets you move. Again, keeping with the theme of uh, keep moving, uh, Nimble is another really good uh, movement boosting card for uh, Monterey. So I added that. Perception, uh, really good if you have a high sprout location and the lockpicks just aren't good enough, you can boost it and get a card from your deck if you succeed. Uh, then quick thinking, uh, another stable rogue guard I like to run uh, and uh, gives you extra actions which is really good if you succeed by enough. Unexpected courage, a stable card, usually when I'm building for blind playthroughs I always add this because I don't know what's, what to expect. and. Uh, that is all of the cards um, I added. Then I got uh, Stubborn Detective as the basic weakness, so nothing really special. But it, it is funny that the damn Stubborn Detective is 
running after us at the Ant Antarctica, so there's that, so maybe Monterey is in trouble with the law or something. Something like that. So, uh, that is the deck. I will be uh, setting up the first scenario. I actually haven't even looked what the scenario is called. I, I saw the card briefly when I uh, was leaving the uh, campaign cards. So the first scenario is Ice and Death. Uh, and it has three parts, so I don't know how that works. Maybe the first part is the part one, then the second, second scenario is part two or something like that. But we'll figure out. I uh, will set up the scenario playthrough once and then film the second playthrough so I know what to expect and I don't have to come all the time while filming <laughs> look at the manual on uh, on the campaign guide on how the how the scenario works and all that so uh, look forward to the first playthrough video of this series thanks for watching and until next time <laughs>